Hi there. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Eric Jackson. I am the Creator Programs Manager here at the Sonoma Community Center. Welcome to our second of three Trash and Artist Talks and Workshop demos in which we get to get to know our Trash and Judges and play with some wonderful, unconventional and fun materials. Tonight, we are really lucky to be able to join Deborah Rappaport in her living room in New York City and get to uh, get to know her a little bit more and ask some questions and learn how to do a great craft. So without further ado, I'm going to add you. Welcome, Deborah Rappaport. It's great to have you. Thank you. <laughs> I have to say, I was introduced to you last year uh, through Janet, who right. is uh, obviously a fantastic person at the Sonoma Community Center and a fantastic volunteer and part of Trash In year in and year out. We love her. And <laughs> I fell in love instantly with you and your style, your creativeness, the, your play. Actually, I wanna see if I can, let me see if I can share a screen because for those people who haven't had a chance to see just some photos of you and your work. Maybe it might be nice to, to give a little, a little sampling, right? So these are just like images that either you shared or we found on the internet, but like, my goodness, talk about color and texture and whimsy. I love the fact that you have great um, play with shape, right? And size and proportion. It is so wonderful to see the fact that you, you've been a costume and design teacher and you teach how to make hats out of paper towels is so fantastic. All of these pieces are so unique. And that's what I love. I love the fact that you are truly a one of a kind artist with a point of view, a style that's extraordinary. So I just, I guess I have to say, where does it come from? <laughs> How does one become the, the fashion icon that is Deborah Debris, Deborah Rappaport? <laughs> Deborah Debris. Well, I think it all started when I was very young. I always say it, when it goes back to when I was three, year, three years old. But I had a very creative mother. And of course, like most of us, we had grandmothers who knitted and sewed and put buttons on everywhere. And it was never considered frivolous. And when we go to Nana's house and we pull out the button drawer and dump it on the floor, my grandpa would say, oi, oi, they're making a mess. And grandma would say, be quiet, they're being creative. So the whole idea of making a mess is the act of creation. You can't create in such order that you can't experiment. And my mother had exquisite taste. And of course she grew up during the depression so she couldn't go to art school. And so she encouraged us. And when my father said, no, I think they should go get a degree in education. My mother said, no, they're gonna be artists. So it's okay. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> and so I think, it, you know, I think we need that support from a very young age, young age. And it really is about a process of play. It's not like you've got to look right to go to church or synagogue, it's like, what can you do with this? What can you do with this fabric and these old toilet paper rolls or these scrubbies, you know, from the kitchen or putting a box on your head or whatever. So Absolutely. I still say it's a process of play and, and an opportunity to experiment. And who cares if you look like a clown or people laugh, big deal. It, you know, it's not brain surgery. So you take the red nose off at the point where you think you look like a clown. <laughs> well, that's interesting because I am curious. I'm sure that you get people, you know, glances and, and looks and such. And so it, it seems that why should that bother you? Is that correct? Well, you know, living in New York, you can wear anything and you'll be acknowledged. And it's not like you do it for acknowledgement, but you're not going to be spat on or laughed at. People, you know, would say, well, if you lived in Tennessee, would you dress the same way? I would never live in Tennessee. So. <laughs> but I, you know, I've been to Florida and I've dressed this way and people sometimes give you a strange look like, are, uh, are you in a play or are you going to the circus? And you know, I'm not even dressed as a clown or anything. I'm just dressed in color and texture. Yeah. So I just acknowledge it and I say, no, this is just my normal attire. 
matter, you know? I'm just having a good time. Color is energy, color is joy, you know? You know, everybody in New York, okay, I have gray on today. I hardly ever wear black, but it looks like I'm wearing black today. Um, Actually, kind of can you give us a tour of what you have on at the moment? Yeah. Well, I have this neck piece on, which is an old rusted spring that I found in Mexico. And then this is just some cable that I found in the street and attached it just simply with nothing. Yeah. And uh, it's a very simple one. Usually I add color and other things, but this one just made such a statement that I kept it that way. And this is a sweater I got um, years ago. I forget the name of the store, but it's almost like steel wool. I, I don't know if you can see it. It's metallic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And since steel wool is a favorite material, I of course loved it. And I love the fact that the way the sleeves show the shoulder and all that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a treasure. <laughs> and I never throw anything away. If I love it, I love it forever. And mm -hmm. um, then I have these cute little tights on that my friend Martina found in a dollar store the other day. And she gave them to me. And I thought, well, since I'm sitting down, I can wear these and then just show you a little bit. And then I have just a little skirt on because the sweater is too short. So I had to put a little skirt. And then of course I have some cuffs on and, um, you know, we're gonna talk about that, but you know, I go for color and this one was a postcard or an advertisement or something. And then um, it has pipe cleaners and then what I call my gems and my gems are just, a wad of tissue paper, wadded up, and then just wrapped in a, in a way, you know, um, to hold it together. Oh. And this is a favorite. This is made from the Nespresso pods. And uh, yeah. my good friend, Helen Drutt, was a big drinker uh, of, <laughs> Nespre of Nespresso. <laughs> and she would save them for me. And I know that the company is, is now collecting them, but, um, <laughs> I couldn't imagine them going in the landfill. So for years I've been collecting them and making necklaces out of them. And then I decided, well, I might as well try making a cuff. And then this is a very old cuff and it has, um, um, what's her name? Postcard, um, Diana Vreeland on the postcard when her film came out. Mm. And so that that's from that. And again, it has one of my gems on the surface and we'll talk about that later. And then I've got nothing interesting on my feet except a pair of rubber shoes. <laughs> and my earrings are, I started making a series of rings because it's going to be a ring show in Philadelphia at Moore College of Art mm -hmm. uh, that Helen Drutt is curating. And she needed a second ring for me. So I made one out of toilet paper rolls, just like we're going to be making the cuffs. And then after making a series of them, I said, well, let's see if I can turn them into earrings. So just a toilet paper roll, some twisted paper in the middle. And these happen to have just more twisted paper into these little dialy things. And some of them have found metal on them. And this is what keeps me busy at night. I call, I call, you know, <laughs> this is, I call mending is meditation. So anything I do in my very low tech process is really a meditation. That's what keeps me quiet. It lets me go inside. It allows me to recognize who I am without any judgment. And that's what keeps me sane, especially these days. I love so I it. think the I think the creative process is the most important thing. Oh, and my hat is made from laundry lint and um, steel wool and an old uh, can lid on the top and a feather that's on its last leg. And I made it when I was teaching at Mad Museum, Museum of Arts and Design, when they had a show on dirt, dust and ash. So I had to come up with projects that we could make in New York because we really couldn't collect much dirt and we couldn't collect much <laughs> ash. So, but laundry lint and steel wool and things like that we could collect and work with. No, so Deborah. Do yeah. you find it difficult or easy to work with unconventional materials? It's the only thing I know how to do. Yeah. Because, um, you know, like they, they just show up like bottle caps from our favorite wine. And of course that's my favorite color, like your shirt, Eric. 
chartreuse. So I see them and they become like my friends. They talk to me. And one of, one of my favorite materials, because I'm so twisted, I love what I just do with it. I had it here. I love to take masking tape and again, as a meditation and just twist it. So this is normal wrapping tape. This is some old tape of a gorgeous color that I bought a whole lot of because the stickum was gone and it was like on Canal Street being dumped. Um, when I did it, the roll. So I was just gonna show you the masking tape and just normally, oh, did I move it? Anyway, I'll, oh, here it is. <laughs> no. So it's just masking tape. And in one of the photographs, you may have noticed I was wearing a green and a red and a blue necklace. And I made it when I was in Mexico. And at night I would just sit around and literally that's all you do. You just twist the tape, right? Let me see if I can pull it's it out. It's very satisfying. It's almost like plying wool. One, one strand of ply. Is it this one? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you uh, see those three necklaces? Yes. So they're just on three, three lengths of wire and then woven twisted tape. Amazing. And it's just it's a wonderful material. And of course you could buy tape in any color and nobody knows what it is. And then it's like, what, what is that? It's just basic masking tape. So <laughs> it's very fun. And my other, one of my other favorite mundane materials is paper cord. And it used to be very available. It's what they make shopping bag handles out of. And now it's getting harder and harder to find. You can find it in craft shops, but it's not as hardy as the good old stuff. And back in the eighties, I made a lot of hats out of them. I called them corded crowns. And it's very fun to use on the cuffs because you know, it's, it's got a nice weight to it and it's like the tape. It's just one ply twisted and it's just, it's just a great material. It's like a slinky almost. I can just imagine you walking down the street and looking at things and being like, oh, that could be a, you know, a hat or this could be a cup or this could be a great yeah. necklace. Is that how you, you view the world? Is that the lens you yeah. see the world through? Well, there are two really good videotapes. I don't know if I ever sent them to you. One that the New York Post did of me collecting stuff, walking around the street. And another one, 60 Second Dock, where I'm literally walking around the street and finding an old washer and an old piece of metal. And uh, I mean, I'm not picking up stuff now because it's a little freaky now, but always, you know, I'm not afraid of germs and stuff like that. And like I I think I pointed out my other favorite thing or uh, the scruffy pads that, yeah. you know, three for a dollar in the dollar store and they make wonderful bracelets and they're gorgeous, you know, with the cuffs. So you'll see those in a lot of my photographs. Now you've had exhibits throughout the US including the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I would love to hear about some of your work that you've exhibited. Well, I didn't exhibit at the Met. They they acquired two pieces for me in the in the costume collection Love back it. in the '60s. But through the grapevine, and I heard that they de-acquisitioned them, and I have no idea where they are. So, it's part of history. We're still going to um, say you exhibited there. That's what we're going to say. That what? <laughs> That's our secret. We'll just say that you exhibited there. Right. Okay. Um, I did just have last year at this time a big show. Um, at the Elias Lalunas Jewelry Museum in Athens, Greece. And they did an exquisite job. The director came to New York and chose everything and carried it back in three suitcases because it was all wearable. But then they took the photographs I have and they blew them up. And in the showcases were these large photographs with the, the cuff or the hat or the neck piece and whatever. And it was just a miraculous job. And I did two hat workshops and unfortunately the show had to close early because we were on lockdown. So that was, it ended in March. And now if people um, want to find out more information about uh, photos or how they can follow you, where, where can they follow you? How can they find out more? Well, Instagram is, is the best on Deborah Rappaport to spell my name right. And um, uh, also, Advanced Style. If you go to Advanced Style, I'm in the in the film and all three of Ari Seth Cohn's books. 
And also there are several videos on advanced style. And there's advanced style do it yourself with Deborah, where I show you how to make the, the uh, toilet uh, Viva paper towel hats. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff. I don't do Facebook anymore, but because Instagram is enough and that's the most fun. So I had a lot more pictures. I got hacked last July. So <clears throat> a lot of the pictures came down, but um, I got all my followers back. So, you know, it's part of, part of the technology fun. Oh my right, goodness. right. Yeah. and this whole year has been all about the word pivoting to technology as well and us being able to do classes and live events how has actually how has this past year affected you and your art or your artistic expression well since i say mending is meditation anytime i find a pair of socks that need that have a hole and need mending that's what i do um you know, as I said, just sitting and doing any kind of repetitious work is meditative to me. And I'm a Cancerian, so I'm a homebody and being home does not bother me. And living in New York, I can go outside and walk around the block and be urban for 10 minutes and that suits me. So, um, and then there've been a fair number of these things that uh, like all of this month and, and May, it's like back to back, I'm like, so busy because people are coming alive again yeah. and uh, so the pandemic hasn't a lot of people have left new york so especially a lot of young people as i mentioned they've been able to take their jobs and go somewhere else and and work virtually so a lot of my 25 year old friends have gone and um but now with the weather getting better you know we're meeting in the parks and we're meeting in restaurants because it's more comfortable and we've all been vaccinated so mm -hmm. um for me, it wasn't a year from hell, but I understand and watching the news just is just devastating. You know, it's just beyond. Well, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're with us because we love it. I wanna actually let everyone know who's viewing and watching. Uh, we are with Deborah Rappaport and we are open to having a conversation with all of us together, meaning that if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Deborah, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'll be uh, canvassing the chat throughout the session and we'll drop in when appropriate. We will be jumping into our demo shortly, but uh, before we do, I just, I just wanna go back to your childhood. I'm just curious about, was there that one person that was kind of like a, oh, I see you, you're inspiring, or there's something about you that I'm starting to like connect with, or what was that one aha moment for you? Well, believe it or not, I think when I was in graduate school at UC Berkeley with Ed Rosbach, and I went to Carnegie, Carnegie Tech, what now Carnegie Mellon, and I experienced that education was about intimidation. Hmm. And so I always felt smaller and smaller. And when I met Ed Rosbach in Berkeley, my whole world opened. It was like, you can do no wrong. This is fantastic. How can we make it bigger? How can we make it better? Let's keep going. And it wasn't about trying to, I mean, every time I talk about this, I get verklempt because it really was a turning point in my life. At 22 was incredible, an incredible time, you know? Uh, coming, coming from New York and going to a place like Berkeley, I had no idea what I was in store for. So mm. that, that was a major turning point. And uh, it wasn't, as I always say, it wasn't about criticism, it was about support. And, uh, and I, I know, of course, when I was in textile classes, you know, you start out and you do weaving and all that. And I would take yardage off the loom and I'd say, um, actually, this is a blanket I wove in Sweden in, in, in the sixties. And I would take it off the loom and I'd say, but it's too rectangular, Ed, what should I do? And I'd start pulling on it and making it uh, distorted. And he'd say, well, then let's not work on the loom. Let's go to knotless netting or let's go to macrame or something and mm -hmm. let's make the forms organic if that's what you want. You know, and a light went off. And basically that's what I've been doing for the last 55 years. Yeah, it's a sense of, and this is going back to my roots of being in theater. They always say, playing the game of yes and. It's never no, it's never wrong. It's yeah. the improv world. I will take yeah. what I'm given and I will build upon it and accept. And then everything is all about yes 
and what else and what else yeah. it's all about how we can accept and build upon whatever we're given exactly i even took improv for a year and i the teacher nailed me in an hour because she said don't fix it it's not for you to fix it's yes <laughs> and and keep moving and i never forgot that because i am one who wants to like make everything neat and tight even though yeah. i like to make a mess part of me is very controlling and i want things neatly defined so yes and you got it i see you as not only a fashion icon but an inspiration and i feel like the way that you present yourself in the world is in that sense of yes and do you see yourself in that way i try to you know i try i try to be true to myself because i think that's the most important thing you know, again, after going through years of intimidation and then finally saying, okay, this is who I am. And I have a mantra, the four T's, yes. four T's. And the first T is truth. And we all know our truth, but it gets so buried deep down in our culture because we're really not allowed to own it. You got to own it. So you find that truth. And then second T is trust. You got to trust it. It's too easy to judge it, criticize it, poo-poo it. And then you've got to be tolerant of it. And then you've got to wrap that all in tenderness mm -hmm. and put it out there in the world and give everybody else the space for their four T's. And wow. that's, to me, that's the only truth there is, is just really knowing who you are, you know? And you may think you're supposed to be a lawyer or a doctor or a business person, but if that's not you, you've got to go inside and recognize what, what works for you. Because that's the only way we can be successful if we are who we're supposed to be. And we only know that, you know, our parents may say, oh, you're so brilliant, you should be X. But if it's not you, then you've, you've got to acknowledge that somewhere along the way. And that keeps you healthy too, you know, because you're not angst and you're not uh, stressed, you know, stress is our, is our biggest problem in our culture. That's why people have diabetes and high blood pressure and heart problems and irritable bowel and eczema and psoriasis and asthma. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Our emotions manifest themselves physically within us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, yes. I just want to make a comment um, in having met Deborah in the wonderful way that I met Deborah that was sort of an accident <laughs> um, and having spent some time with you and meeting some of your friends, you offer exactly what you want to be offering. I mean, in and I mean this in, it means so much to me that I connected with you because I felt just the, the freedom to just accept, you know, what I want to do and what we were all doing. And everybody was just super, you're just so gracious and, and open to everyone. It's just, it's an honor to be around you. I just. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Well, we got to have fun. And what's more fun than fun? meeting new people and exploring ideas together. You know, that day we all went to the museum and what, what I had about 20 women here and mm -hmm. some of them were from, from Berkeley and uh, you know, it was the month of May and everybody's in New York the month of May. So we usually have a gathering because- That was fun. It's a good month, yeah. month of May. That's the time to go to New York. That's the time I love to go to New York. Um, yeah. Shall we jump on in, Deborah? Shall we? Sorry? Shall we oh. jump on in and do some crafting? Yeah, okay. Love it. So as you as you know, we're gonna we're gonna work um, and make cuffs from toilet paper rolls, which everybody has. <laughs> and years ago, when I started to make this kind of thing, I I was making them out of paper mache and making it a cuff shape. But it took so long for it to dry and layers and all that. And then one day I said, you know, this is the armature to work on. It already exists, and why throw it in the landfill? So let's just use it. And then I go from there and I either save postcards or this was from a package of chocolate from a young friend who just put out a magnificent um, musical album. Um, this was from a donut shop. Hmm. Oh. So I save all this stuff. This is some um, old 
advertisements, I think, from uh, Comme des Garçons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so anything that's of interest to me, tea bags are my passion. I save tea bags and I pile them up and I tie them up. And in one of the pictures you saw, I was wearing a boa and it was all tea bags. Oh. And I used to teach workshops in boas, bibs, and breastplates because I love big things around the neck because my other thing is frame the face. When you walk in a room, you want your face to shine. Nobody's gonna care about your $2,000 shoes. They wanna see you. <laughs> so you either do it with a boa, a breastplate, or a bib, or a hat, or whatever, to, to stand out, just to, to shine. Deborah, I'm so, gonna show the this picture real quickly. I believe this okay. is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely tea bag. So that necklace is just tea bags, and it's just uh, glued onto more paper cord. And you can see some of the tea bags were turmeric tea, and some were something else, because slightly different colors. And so you can see I drink a lot of tea. <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee too, but I like tea as well. <laughs> um, okay, so then we got <clears throat> the cardboard roll and then a postcard or any kind of graphic of your choice. And then good old glue. And my favorite is Aileen's Tacky, which you can get yeah. anywhere and I happen to have it in, in big jars so I have to keep it upside down so that when I go to use it it's right there and ready or put some in a dish and um so I started by by gluing some of these together earlier today and I use my basic clothespins which I adore very high tech to help secure it while it's drying and then after I do the the paper covering i then begin to embellish so here i have some ribbon that my friend sherry ma from berkeley sent me a whole box of wonderful residue and then i happened to have some of this paper cord that i painted and i had some leftover so i thought so now i'm going to maybe glue these on vertically and the sky's the limit you know you can use uh pipe cleaners, um, some of my other favorite thing. And then the twisted tape, you know, is another thing that I, that I love to use. You know, any, any form of ribbon or elastic. Um, one of my favorite things is just cut up tights or leotards just into, into strips. And the same thing with t-shirts. And so then what happens, you know, when you pull it, it becomes almost cylindrical and it becomes thinner. And so adding that to the cuff is very beautiful, you know, so you can add it on the edge, you can add it on this edge and just keep building with any of the materials that you want. And then what I do to physically and visually pull the whole thing together is I save all the mesh bags from onions and garlic and oranges and potatoes. And I love to cover the piece ultimately with the mesh. So you see it visually pulls it together and it secures all the things that you add on. And then after you do that, there's no saying that you can add additional stuff for more dimension on the surface. Can you all see this well enough on the screen? Yes, thank you. Yeah. And again, any of, any of the linear elements you know, on any size to add. And then if I wanna add one of my gems, then this is one I did earlier today with just a piece of the copper scrubby and then I bound it in and you can bind it in anything and I'll show you how I do that. Um, this one I happen to bind in the twisted kind of pinky orange tape and I really like it with the rest of the donut images and of course it's, gonna, it's going to be very three-dimensional on here but 
who cares? That's what I like. <laughs> okay. And, um, and then, like I said, I love the hammered or, or I stomp on them to the uh, bottle caps and they're fun. And then of course, pieces of found metal, but the found metal is very scarce these days because the cars are pretty much plastic, but you know, an old washer. And again, pipe cleaners I love because they have a dimension and they come in so many wonderful colors and they're so easy to glue on. And so I could have texture underneath the mesh and then additional texture on the surface. And I have a whole bunch of bracelets lined up here. So I was gonna see if I reverse the camera. Let's see if I can do that. And Deborah, I also have pictures you sent that we can go through. And if you wanted to talk about materials used, we can do that as well. Yeah. So here you can see a whole bunch of the cuffs. Wow. And then recently I started making them like this one for a workshop. Okay, now I'll flip the camera around again. Um, Let me plug it in or it's gonna. So I started taking the same material, the, the toilet paper roll. Mm -hmm. And instead of embellishing it with linear things like yarn and things, I started adding more dimensional things on the surface. So this was another cardboard roll and then tea bags with date pits on top. And because it was a, a, for a workshop that was supposed to be inspired by the Wiener Werkstatter uh, jewelry, which was a lot of primary colors and bold stones, but it needed to be done for family days. So we're talking about working with parents and young children. So here it's the same thing. It's, it's the toilet paper roll, but then I cut it up into strips and I kind of wove it, but left loops on the surface and then added a couple of these bag ties that you know come on bags of bread or whatever i love and, that and then and then um and then painted so the other ones i usually don't paint although once in a while i'll, I'll go in with nail polish or something if i want a particular color or if i want the edges to be a particular way but these are all about paint and color the others are about color but they're color based on uh, materials and um, what else you know and of course I think we all have bits and pieces of ribbon hanging around and again cut up old clothes and you know these are colored garbage bags and so again it's a beautiful plastic and you know anything twisted becomes a linear element so depending on how thin you want it this could be a nice like cable size trim to add to the cuff or you can keep twisting it and make it even finer um so do you want do you people want to start uh, gluing and and working yes do you want to talk sure, why not? a couple of your photos deborah yeah 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 here let me share what we have that you sent over okay so these are some of the cuffs do you want to talk about the the materials used on these? Well, you could see working in that they all have the mesh on, on top. The one, the pinky one on, on my left, uh, um, that's some computer strip or something with the multicolor wires, I have no idea, you know? And the other one, I don't even know what it is other than, you know, there's some twisted yarn or something in the blue and then the pinky salmon color is just another you know uh, passementary ribbon going vertically yeah i love the mesh too i i i love i love mesh yeah some of these okay, are your so gems here we have one where you know it's got two vertical ribbons and instead of one gem there are two little gems on either side so that's kind of fun I have that one here. And then the other one has the gem in the minute, middle. middle. 
Okay, the Perrier one is one of my favorites and it's like a bicycle reflector that I found in the street, the yellow, oh, yellowy orange. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. And the other one again is, I don't know, whatever the graphics were. And then the, the green is a bottle cap from, uh, you know, cardboard container of a vegetable broth. So I save those a lot and I'll often string those up. I just take a hot needle and I pierce a hole and then just string them together or use them in between something almost like a spacer because I use a lot of vegetable broth. So I got a lot of green lids. Okay, and two more. I don't know, I think, I think the one at the top here with the white pleated is a shower cap from a hotel and rather than <laughs> unravel it, it was all pleated up. So I left it like that. <laughs> I love that. Incredible. So good. It's all about texture, you know? I mean, there's so much texture in our lives. Um. It looks like <laughs> the top one has almost a, a repurposed piece of fabric for, um, mm -hmm. clothing piece. Yeah, yeah, like a seam. I'm trying yeah. to I'm gonna see if I have it here. Yeah, you know, just a, a piece of leftover smata. They're great. They're so great. I mean, the sky's the limit because the fun part is that you have the format of a piece of cardboard and then you just build a composition from there, you know? No, I so, think we might go over this, Deborah, but there was a quick yeah. question about how yeah. do you finish uh, the, the cup yeah. opening or, or secure the cup? Oh, but okay. If we're jumping so, ahead. Let us know. Yeah. Okay, so after I get the, the mesh on, you know, then I cut it to size. And then of course you're gonna glue it so that it's, the edges are all internal. And then I'll often line the inside, either with a paper towel or something smooth. And then uh, industrial paper towel, which is what the Viva is like. And then also the, the blue industrial paper towel that I'm using now um is very strong so i could line i could line it i think i have one here yeah okay and then i happen to have a whole bunch of elastic length but you, all you really need to do is cut open rubber bands and i pierce holes in two places on either side and i thread it to the inside, I use an awl, which is just a pointed thing. And then I pull it through and I make the knots on the inside. So the outside is clean. And then it's easy enough to get in and out of it and it'll stay. Sometimes if I'm in a rush and I wanna wear it before I finish it, I'll just take a, a, a hair stretcher thing and, and put it on or just a rubber band to hold it. But if I want it to be finished, then I'll use the elastic and finish it by having it tied inside. This is, this is a cuff I just made last week. I had an old bath brush that was going and it had a natural curve in it. And of course I couldn't throw it away. So I had to adhere it to <laughs> toilet paper roll. <laughs> A friend brought me some old stuff out of her attic and it happened to have some dowels. So I put this wooden dowel and then a couple uh, pieces of metal and then just um, a wrapped with wrapped paper, the thing that I use in the earring. So I was doing a whole series of those. It's actually wrapped paper over, over a pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaners are great. You know, we loved them as kids. So let's love them again. So this is a favorite right now because how can you throw a bath brush away? That's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, you know? But the whole fun is to, is to be in our environment and really be excited about what's hanging around. Mm -hmm. Okay, so speaking of toilet paper rolls, as long as I'm in the living room and it's here. I hope everyone's inspired at the moment. I hope you're saving up all of those fruit and vegetable bags so we can make <laughs> <laughs> cups for days and days uh, exactly once you get started you can't stop so that's how the earrings and the rings started because um i saw a piece on instagram that was 
a metal bodice and it was uh, at the Metropolitan Museum. And I said, oh my God, I'm in love with that. So I, did, I had to simulate it with <gasps> the cardboard. Oh, wow. Gosh. So I cut the toilet paper roll into strips and I put two, two strips together. Do I have one strip here to show you? You know, I just cut it about half inch and put two of them together. And then I just assembled it into this large bodice. Deborah. And then I did Can a you put it on? Huh? You want me to Can put you it put on? it on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I made a smaller version, and this is a crown. Oh, beautiful. And then I made one more, which is which I can't get because it's too far away in the other room. And I and it's a big bow and it has all copper strips on it. it it's on my Instagram site. I'm wearing a woven green jacket, also fabric I woven in, in uh, Sweden in 1966. And my sister had it made into a jacket, and we still have it. Wow. So okay, so this to put on. Deborah, you are killing us. That is no, no, fantastic. No, 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 no. Just be inspired and stay alive. Whoops. <laughs> be inspired. I'm not here to kill alive. you. Let's see. Okay, let me. I just have to hold it or put a, a close pin on. Let's see. Can you see it? Oh, wow. Yes. That yeah, is really funny. funny to wear. Uh, I gotta stand up, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do it that way. Oh, wow. 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 And so again, you know, it was so meditative all those days with nothing to do, just cut and paste toilet paper rolls. <laughs> and it's so funny too, because remember back at the beginning of the, <laughs> the pandemic and there's like that whole thing of people hoarding toilet papers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought, how, dare they? I, how dare they i need those rolls those are mine <laughs> <laughs> so let's see so should we get started do you guys want to start pace absolutely and embellishing i want to know about your hat lynn she's muted oh i'm okay. sorry i okay. might yeah. okay. like to go to like um fairs that have um you know old rustic things and yeah, yeah. They, and people were just selling their wares and I saw this hat, it was like 10 or $20. And I'm like, I love more. I also love chartreuse. I painted my front door chartreuse, but <laughs> I my friend said, you've got to buy that hat. And you know what? Thank you for having us put something on because I need a little cheering today. It's been a tough day for me. So you are yeah. just the, the dose of medicine I needed tonight. Yay. Thank you. Good, I, today was a very, very strange day. Very strange. A lot of, I don't know what, but yeah. Okay, so that's why we, we need to play. You know, that helps us shift the mood and uh, and get positive. So do you all have your toilet paper rolls? Do you all have a postcard or something to start gluing with? Do you have your glue? Yes? Yes. So do you want, do you want to start or do you want to keep talking or? I say we do both. I think we can multitask. Right. What do you guys think, team? Multitask. I feel like feel free to uh, raise hands or throw out questions or put them in the chats. I will continue to observe the chats and uh, we will craft for those people who are working along with us. This is your time to be creative. I can't wait to see what everyone comes up with by the end of the session. And again, either you can put your glue, you know, in a dish and you use a brush if you like, or just take it right out of the container, whatever, whatever works for you. And if you have clothespins, fine. If you have paper clips, fine. If not, you could just put a rubber band around it to hold. So Deborah, we have a question. Ryan, do you mind if I, shall I spotlight you or do you want to just be audio? Uh, I'm fine just being audio. All right. But thank you for asking. Uh, Deborah, so I, I'm fascinated by the story that you shared um, going from a structured educational environment into a yes and environment. <laughs> uh -huh. So what, I, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a big transition creatively to go into. So how, how was that 
how was that process for you? And what do you, what was the hardest, what was the hardest thing to get over basically? The hardest thing to get over was myself being intimidated and just allowing myself to truly be supported by the energy of, of Ed Rossback in Northern California and Berkeley. And um, all, all, all the students that year, we all loved each other. If they're still alive, we, we still are in touch and it's 50 years later. Um, but, it, but it was like a group process. It was the, the group energy of yes and, and let's play and let, can I see you work and what are you doing? And then we used to have tea parties and we get together share food and show our work. And Ed Rosbeck would say, this is so unique. And we said, but isn't this what graduate school is about where you do your own work, but you share it and you learn from each other. He said, not like this group ever before. So community is important and it's not about being jealous or competitive because how else do we learn in life if we don't share the experiences? So, and not taking ourselves so seriously, you know? I mean, I'm just watching the program on Hemingway and in some, so many ways he was so self-indulgent and so, you know, needing to succeed and needing to be famous and at the same time so insecure and needing to change wives and, oh my God, it's so tedious, you know? And that, that's just not who I am. I just wanna have a good time and be healthy. You know, I'm, I don't care about fame and fortune. You know, there's a wonderful quote by uh, Bob Marley. I know so many people who are so poor, all they have is money. Wow. Now that to me is so profound. People think they need money to be happy. And sometimes it's the worst. I have a friend who had, absolutely everything and she committed suicide last week and i can't i still can't get over it Sorry everything to everything to live for an overachiever everything grandchildren a fabulous husband houses apartments jewelry everything and we still can't figure out what it what it was except um one friend said she was manic and she could never fill up there was always more that she needed to be satisfied. And it's very sad. And I think our culture is responsible for a lot of that. And I think the pandemic is, is here mm -hmm. to try to have us reflect and really understand what is important. You know, do we have to run around and, and, and work umpteen hours a week and just to have money to put in the stock market and buy three houses, and two airplanes. I mean, possessions, possessions don't necessarily do it. Yeah, it's wonderful to have a roof over your head and wonderful to have good food. I heard a, a statistic that Americans now only spend 10% of their incomes on food. Okay, food has gotten cheaper, you know, even though it's cheaper, some of it's better. But a lot of our food is really junk food. They said 30 years ago or 40 years ago, people spent 30% of their income. And like 50 years ago, people spent 40% of their income on food because it was important. You know, I don't think we realize that food is medicine and that if we don't take care of ourselves eating properly and eating real food, then um, our health is going to be compromised. So. I think money is important to buy good, beautiful, healthy food. And as Michael Pollan says, just eat real food. And I say, if it comes in a box, eat the box because at least you'll get fiber and it's better than the stuff inside. <laughs> oh, life lessons from Deborah Ford. <laughs> okay, I'm finished preaching. No more preaching. <laughs> It's, it's, it's actually true though. And, and I resonate with the, what are the simple pleasures, right? What yeah. we've been forced as a society to yeah. navel gaze, to sit in the corner and reflect, think about what it is that we have been doing and that what it is that we'd like to be doing. 
and what yeah. is makes us happy. And yeah. that's a powerful place to be in and a yeah. powerful place to be in as well. Yeah, go deep inside and really find your truth. This is the time to do it. Uh, and I, you know, I realize it, it's not easy because a lot of people are really struggling and really, you know, almost afraid they're going to get um, thrown out of their apartments and it's terrible. Oh. I also think it goes back to the simple pleasures of, okay, what makes you happy? Does exactly. this clothing item make you happy? Does this yeah. pillow make you happy? Yeah. This recipe that you got from your grandmother, does that yeah. make you happy? Yes, bake it. Bake that thing and be happy. Yeah, right. And make it again and again and then share it with other people. And, and gratitude. They say, happy, uh, you can't have happiness first and then have gratitude. You first have to have gratitude and that'll make you happy. Gratitude comes first. You know, and we say, you know, we are the lucky 1%. We have a roof over our heads. We have food on the table. We have running water. We have materials to play with, even if we pick them up in the street and, and it's debris. We've got the creativity. And my partner, who's a wordsmith, says, creativity is the closest thing to creation. Because when we create, aren't we being closest to spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, because we're, we're being our true self. And it doesn't matter whether we're gardening, painting, cooking, doesn't matter whatever the form of creativity is. It's just the true energy, the spirit coming from you and it's being manifested in some form. I like that art has become, or it seems like it's a philosophy to you, Deborah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, yeah. I want to go back to challenges. Uh, there was a question that popped up about what has been the most challenging, uh, I guess, piece you've worked on or material you've worked with. If it's been that challenging, I probably abandoned it. <laughs> <laughs> um, challenging. Well, back in the 70s, my good friend Susan Wick and I did a collaborative piece out of 300 pounds of natural fleece. I was living in San Francisco in, in Synanon, which is a drug habri, um, community, but I was living there as a square because they were trying to make the community uh, all inclusive. And we had a ranch up at Tamales Bay. And it's fun talking about this because you're all Californians. And I was able to get as much fleece as I wanted from the ranch. And Susan was living down in Montalvo in uh, not, uh, uh, and the Arboretum, Montalvo down the peninsula. Is that the name of it? Go, okay. And so she was able to get as much uh, botanical materials <clears throat> as needed. And so she would prepare the dye stuff and I would get the fleece and I would go over to her house and for hours we would natural dye all this fleece until we had the 300 pounds dyed. And then we formed it into a large piece that got sent to uh, the Tapestry Biennale in Lausanne, Switzerland. And what we did is we did very simple needle knitting, which is just using your five fingers that you just knit, but you knit tubes. And we made the tubes out of uh, fish line, nylon monofilament. And we stuffed the fleece in there. And then we took all the, these linear stuffed elements and sewed them together and we made this piece that was about 10 feet tall by 20 feet wide and shipped it to Switzerland. And that was very challenging and very fun. And we didn't want to ship it home, so we donated it to the city of Lausanne. Um, other materials, um, well, since I'm so low tech, none of the materials are really challenging to me. Sometimes the challenge is, can I find enough of the found metal to make a piece or can I find enough but if it's not enough then whatever I have that's the piece that's the statement it is what it is does that answer your question I think so and do you have any uh I guess techniques ideas for the best sourcing I guess ways of getting materials best sourcing practices for if you want to get material a or b 
options and avenues to go down? Well, since I'm mostly working with found materials, I just work with whatever shows up. And of course, a lot of people will send me stuff because they know what I'm interested in, or people mostly send me clothing and they say, you know, either wear it or cut it up, do what you want. And of course, I'm a great thrifter and swap meets are the best. Before COVID, we had fabulous swap meets and there's some going on now, you know, just outside so that um, it's in an open space and you're not afraid to do trades and whatever, because you never know what you're going to find at a swap meet and you're not, it's like barter, you're not, you're not exchanging money, you're just exchanging stuff and it doesn't go in the landfill. I can't remember the last time I bought a piece of clothing retail. It mm -hmm. could be 20, it could be 20 years. And then it would only be on my birthday as a special gift, but there's so much good stuff in the thrift shops that it's just a shame. And I always say, Mr. Macy's does not need my money. <laughs> and if you go into a department store, what do you see? A whole rack of black jackets, a whole rack of blue blazers with brass buttons. That's not my style. <laughs> a thrift shop, everything is one of a kind and, it, and it's the quest that makes it exciting, right? Yes. You don't know what yeah. you're gonna find. I'm curious about, and I, I like to ask, uh, especially artists who work in unconventional materials this question, uh, what comes first for you, the chicken or the egg? Is it the material that inspires you or do you think of your project and you seek out the material? Oh, wow. I think it's usually the material because I always have my eyes open for materials and then they speak to me and they tell me this is what they want to be, you know, so it becomes a relationship and I'm trying to get this to stay on my head better. Um, so then I, you know, that's how the, the Viva paper towels, I didn't even bring one paper towel up front with me. Um, how that, that happened, the, the roll of paper towels was sitting on the dining room table and I picked it up and I said, Stan, this is great. Paper towel, it almost feels like cloth. You know, it wasn't like Bounty that had been <clears throat> um, embossed and very papery and uh, papery, yeah. And so then I started to twist it because, you know, I love to twist. And then I started to fold it. And then once it was a linear element, I said, okay, now I could go from here. You know, I can coil it like a basket or coil it like a clay pot. And then of course it became a hat because to me, anything's a hat. A lampshade's a hat, a vase is a hat, a paper bag is a hat, a hat is a lampshade. I often use that <laughs> as lampshades in my apartment. I have a wonderful lampshade over here and I was gonna wear it to the Easter parade, but um, I don't know why I didn't. Everything is a hat, Deborah Rappaport. Because everything is a vessel. So it's a vessel and you either put your head in it or you put flowers in it or you put a light bulb in it. And uh, now tell me that's not gorgeous. Ah, yes it is. It's like a dress hat. It's like a mini dress hat. Yeah, I found it in the street many years ago. How can you pass it up? <laughs> Somebody said, well, why did somebody throw it away? I said, because I think the trim was a little bit going and the wire was coming out here, but otherwise it's in perfect shape. And it's one of my most favorite treasures. It's beautiful. I could wear this to the Kentucky Derby, couldn't I? Yes. One of our local recycle artists just commented in the chat and says that she agrees that creating trash art is meditation. Aww. Yeah. Absolutely. Because again, the I mean, even if you're going to buy yarn or you're going to buy supplies, you know, the, the process of, of the acquisition is fun. But especially if you're working with debris, then your eyes are open all the time and you just don't know what you're going to find in the swap meet or in the flea market or in the thrift shop or in New York, we have something called um, uh, materials for the arts. And you, you have to be teaching or something at a nonprofit to be able to go there. But I have one necklace, which is just uh, about 10 red fake uh, alligator eyeglass cases. You may have seen it online. And so where do, you, where do you get that many eyeglass cases at a place like materials for the arts? 
And so all I did, because they're the clippy, clip closing kind. So I just clipped them onto uh, a large thing that I made, you know, with the finger knitting. And again, my techniques, you know, I learned all the intricate, difficult techniques, but I like simplicity. I like the creativity to come out of the, the process and the mixture of the materials and not, not how um, technical I can get because I'm, I'm not technical. Although um, I can fix almost anything and my partner calls me instead of wrap report, he calls me repair report. <laughs> and I love it. So I think I'm going to change my name or start a business repair report. <laughs> and I may not fix it in the traditional way, but man, I'll get it fixed and it will be fantastic. And when I was younger, I, I didn't know what I wanted to study in college. So my parents sent me to NYU for um, an aptitude test, right? Every Saturday I had to go to these things. And I ranked highest in music and mechanics, so I figured I was doomed to be a piano tuner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're killing me. I'm curious to see how people are doing with their cuffs. Shall yeah, we do yeah, a check-in yeah. and yeah, yeah, a little yeah. like show and tell? Let's okay. see, we have Emma. One second, Emma, let me spotlight you. Oh. oh. Nice. Do you see that, Deborah? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What are you working with? It's incredible. You're muted at the moment, Emma. Um, this was a postcard from the Sonoma Art Museum. Yeah. And then the, um, the purple tie-dye shirt that I used one of my outfits leftover pieces, <laughs> like excessive pieces that I is yeah. I just have it around. And then the other postcard is from the store that uh, went out of business. Oh, okay, but you saved it. Yes. It, it's uh, down memory lane. <laughs> Fabulous. Are you having fun yet? Yes, I am Good. very much. Good. And once you start, don't you feel like you could just keep going and building and building and then you wanna make many, you know, so many of them because once you got the form down, it's like, oh yeah, let's just keep going. Yeah, so I, 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 become, I become an addict. <laughs> Good stuff, Emma. Yeah. Uh, there's another question here. Are you ever afraid of your creations in bad weather? Um, people often ask me that about hats and I say, you know, you wouldn't wear a good straw hat or a beautiful, good quality felt hat in the rain, would you? So why would you wear a paper hat in the rain? But if I have a sense that it might rain and I want to wear it, I just carry an extra bag with me and I take it off and I put it away. So, but no, if, if anything that I wear a cuff or something and something comes off, if one of the, one of the pods falls off, then I take it home and I glue it again. I mean, if you're selling it and people want perfection, then you have to take that into consideration. But most of the time with the cuffs, there's not much that, that can happen. So, and then, you know, everything's ephemeral. I live by the, the, the uh, philosophy of wabi-sabi, which is nothing is, everything is incomplete, impermanent, and imperfect. Yes. And with that in mind, then everything is just the way it's supposed to be. I mean, we're gonna die and we're gonna crumble. We're in, we're in, uh, imperfect we are incomplete and we are impermanent and that's just it and then it makes life a lot easier do we have any other cups that Don't should you think be? eric i actually agree a thousand percent jasmine i'm going to spotlight jasmine one moment there we go yes hi You're muted. Yes, so I'm mute. Okay. Oh, it's you. <laughs> it's me, Jasmine. <laughs> Thank you so much, oh, Deborah. You're so and so inspiring. You're so inspiring. Oh, I love so this. Oh, 
I love the things you are saying to um, people to remember for life stuff. Jasmine is an incredible milliner, makes the most <laughs> incredible creative hats. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I Thank keep you. forgetting, are you in New Mexico or Arizona? Yeah. I always forget. New Mexico. Where? Where are you now? Santa Fe, New Mexico. New Mexico. Right. Yeah. Santa Fe. right, right. <laughs> so I'm making this um, cuff from, uh, I got some, this from a thrift, uh, thrift store. It's yeah. a music. So I, yeah. covered, I covered it to make it stronger to the inside also. And then I worked at a makerspace teaching sewing and somebody was, used the laser cutter and they had all these wood. Oh, you want some? I can send you some. They had these wood circles. And Fabulous. So, um, yeah, I picked those up. I was like, I'm going to make a hat. And I was like, how am I going to make a hat? Anyway, <laughs> the same way you make a bracelet, just make that cuff into put some more cuffs together and make it a, a headpiece. Come on, you can do it. Oh, yeah, I can get my father's drill. I saved you all his to... power tools. I put them in storage. Yeah, I can use this drill. I can drill yeah. holes in this and then use wire gauge and then yeah, uh, yeah, wrap yeah. it all together and make like a strange helmet or, or a, yeah. a lampshade, lampshade hat. So there are some small ones too. And then I thought, wait a minute, I can make it like these are French, French cuffs, French cuffs. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and I then I it. added some pieces of fish leather because I make hats out of fish yeah, leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. The fish leather, yeah. Do you have any of your hats there to show? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, Which yeah. one? Oh my God. Um, okay. Uh, Show and tell. I love yeah. this. I, um, this one's pretty old. It's, it's Nile perch, fish leather helmet. Oh, wow. I'm wearing a white one that I made for myself because then I thought, oh, here's a good thing. Why don't you treat yourself? If <laughs> you're making hats girl. for other people, why don't you advertise yourself on your own head with a good quality hat you made and put a lot of time into? So of course, we're our best and models, I aren't we? Find it and stretch silk just to be decadent. Gorgeous! Oh, because I'm, I'm always on the bicycle and it goes underneath the bicycle helmet. Oh, but gosh. um, and then here's another fish leather like equestrian cap. But that's aren't about it. I don't want to hog the time. <laughs> thank you for sharing thank you for Good asking thing. maybe you could do a workshop in sonoma one time yes please yeah oh god i've been wanting to do a workshop on how to cut yeah. apart uh sweaters and mm. um to make hats that you hat. drape by hand and then sew with embroidery thread right i've been doing that since i lived in san francisco but yeah that's i would love to Teach people that. Jasmine, I'm going to send you my email and we're going to be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, so got excited too. Chair. Thank you so much for this workshop and talk. Thank you. It's so great. I'm glad I joined in. Yeah, I'm glad you're Thank here. You too. Good to see you, Jasmine. Thank you, Deborah. I'm still using your colored telephone wire <laughs> that you gave me years ago. Anyway. Okay, who's next? Who's Anybody who's else? Next? Show and tell. Hmm? Who do we have? I have. I see I, Margaret waving. I did go. one. Hi, Margaret. We're gonna. You're muted at the moment. Unmute. Unmute. I'm so excited I didn't I'm here. Thank you so much for this. I'm enjoying this so much. You are very inspiring. And um, here's my cuff, but um, I don't know, the light is so strong right now. Mm -hmm. But I took a postcard uh, from a gallery that went away in San Francisco, unfortunately, oh. and wrapped it around. And then I've been twisting the red tape. I like that technique. That's good. Oh, good, good, good. And then I cut up another postcard to make, um, I don't think you can see this very well, swirls here. Oh, and good, then I yeah. guess my question is, I'm not really sure how to wrap the netting on and how it gets 
you just work with it and glue it down and yeah i mean you got to cut it open you got to cut it to size and yeah. then you glue it on all four sides that's all yeah and well, you know because i'm having a most great the, time so good <laughs> and then use close pins again because since the mesh is plastic it takes a little long for it to set up right and then right. like i said you know then i then i line the inside so that all those rough edges yeah are i like your idea of the, the industrial paper towel that's pretty cool yeah stuff. yeah they're incredible i love all the right. texture margaret that's <laughs> cool i think i'll wear it on uh you know saturday <gasps> good. Good, good, good that's a nice Yay. little segue okay. that yeah. just a reminder that we have deborah rapaport as one of our wonderful judges on saturday uh tickets are on sale uh, it's going to be at four o'clock California time. It's going to be a live broadcast stream. And we have some great designers here joining us this evening. And I might be there. You might see this face. Uh, I also have to give a little credit that this wonderful crown I'm wearing was made by Margaret uh, for last year's Trash In. These are old postcards <laughs> that we designed for the event that was supposed to happen in April and then got postponed. So why not? make some fancy little headwear out of them. Everything can be a hat, right? It's looking good on you, Eric. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Great. With the chartreuse shirt, woo! Bing, bing, bing. Let's see, who else do we have? Minnie. Wait, I see Molly. Hi, Molly, you're waving. Oh, I just, I'm, I went real simple. Sorry, you guys. The scrubbies, yes. yes. I love it. So I had to write, do something simple so I could write the 12,000 inspirational words that you guys have said. Thank you for this. Thank you. Don't be surprised if it shows up on Instagram. Big quotes. <laughs> this awesome. Who's next? I just wanted to say this was a gift, Deborah. Thank you for doing this. Yep. Lori. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Once I get past the nervousness of the uh, technology, then I'm um, home. Home free. No, it's just a good gift. It really a shot in the arm. I loved it tonight. I didn't well, really let's see. You got a way. You got a shot in the arm. Let's see what's oh. on your arm. These are buttons. <laughs> I make buttons. These are just lots of pearly buttons. With yeah, but it's crochet. gorgeous. It's a, you know, crochet. an elastic. Kind of, yeah. Black elastic thread stunning. that I crochet. Yes, yeah, stunning. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Well, from a guy from the 60s who gave me all his drawing stones. <laughs> Fabulous. Good. They look good and bold. I think I'm a little too Makes conservative. I think they need to be a little more interesting. <laughs> anyway, that's okay. Well, you could always, I mean, if you want to add color, take nail polish and paint the edges or something. That's a great idea. Love that idea. I think you I'm know, because gonna... nail polish comes in so many great colors and it's so easy to use. I love that idea. <laughs> On the button. That's great. Do you need elastic? I have, I have tons of thread elastic. I have overstock of colored thread elastic well, you know because i use it for um crocheting yeah. too much yeah in all colors if you want you well what do you wait are you you're gonna send it to me i'll send it to you <laughs> yeah, sure okay <laughs> okay <laughs> these <laughs> days i don't want to make anybody have to go to the post office or anything i'm trying to simplify everybody's lives <laughs> i can get your address from eric or something i'll send okay you yeah great <laughs> send you some wads there okay, you thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, Who's next? Um, I, okay, when, when we're finished, then I'm going to show you how I make the, um, the gems, okay? I think we had one more, and then we'll go to gems. Yeah. I see okay, Lynn good. waving her hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, Eric, you'll love this. Um, you know, I wasn't, didn't come prepared tonight, but I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I do have some a paper towel or a toilet paper roll, and I have a little box of goodies in my junk drawer with things oh. and i also have strips from uh, hello popcorn bags that you might Ooh. Ooh. know <laughs> that are part of our uh well, i don't want to give too much away but part of the runway show give it and away i found a, <laughs> a postcard real quickly and i found this um button that i have love is a four-letter word and uh, anyway, that's, it's wow. very simple. I haven't really uh -oh. done too much uh -oh. with it. Uh -oh, what happened? Did you fall off? <laughs> Uh-oh. There you yeah, go. I, back. Uh, okay. 
Beautiful. And I think, go ahead, Lynn, tell them about the popcorn bags. I think it's a... Well, um, since COVID, I've been, um, my dirty little secret is I've been obsessed with um, the bagged popcorn. It's Himalayan salt with a little bit of coconut oil. So I started saving the bags because of trash and fashion. I'm like, Eric, I have all these bags. And so voila, now they are flowers. They became flowers and my friend was moving and she said, I have these old Christmas balls. I said, oh, let me have them. Don't give them to anybody, but we're gonna use those Christmas balls. So I don't wanna say any more if you wanna say more what you, uh, Eric, no, it's but. all good. It's simply a part of our runway set sure. that you'll see on Saturday for anyone tuning in. So I'm saving the rest of our popcorn bags and I did, did it as a border on my cuff. <laughs> I love it. Yes, reuse, reuse, reuse. And it's chartreuse. Yeah, reuse. All right, Deborah, let's do some gems. Okay, so I either just take a little bit of toilet paper or Kleenex. I used to use um, shredded paper because I used to be in the flower business and a lot of flowers, especially orchids, would come in shredded paper. You can't find shredded paper so much anymore. Newspaper maybe, but that's too coarse. So you can take a Kleenex toilet paper and scrunch it into a ball about an inch and a half or however big you want it. And then either take thread or yarn. I'm gonna use a yarn now so you can see it. And the only important thing is, you know, get a tail underneath so you can hang onto it in the back. And then you're gonna come across. And the important thing is you wanna keep doing it at 45, at 90 degree angles. So I'm horizontal and now I'm gonna go vertical. See, so I'm, six o'clock to 12 o'clock, and I was three o'clock to nine o'clock. You see that? Yeah, that's-, that's Because if I just place. go like this, if I just do this, it's gonna just all fall off, right? So you have to keep it going at right angles the best you can. So you do that, and then, let's see, then you move over a bit. And Deborah, if you just want to adjust slightly to your left, there you go. Perfection. So you see, I'm always, I'm always just keeping it absolutely crossing the center. I'm trying to do it backwards and seeing it in the, and then I move over. So you're basically trying to really make a star. You see, so that everything is always crossing in the middle. Otherwise they're gonna, gonna fall, fall off because if you just do that, like I showed you, it's just gonna be sloppy and it can look fun, but unless you add glue, they're gonna begin to fall off unless you keep it at right angles. But it's such a simple mundane thing, play with it and see what you come up with. And then you keep tightening it so that the uh, paper underneath scrunches a little. So you may want to make it a drop bigger than what the final result will be. And of course, it's a great way to use up some various yarns or threads that you have. And it's a great way to incorporate more color. I'll often do it with several different color threads like this. <clears throat> So that's gray and purple threads. I love that dimension and depth. Yeah. And I'm not, well, I love crystals, but I'm not big on diamonds and pearls. So these, these gems to me are very sacred and I love them. <laughs> and again, this is one where I had a bead and I threaded the bead and I added it to the surface. And um, <clears throat> Was he? Oh, the tea bags, yeah. And so folded up tea bags. I don't have a bracelet with one of them on, but again, it's a nice um, embellishment. 
Here's one where I took the mesh bags and twisted them and used it as a linear element. And the blue is a, a sparkly um, pipe cleaner shriveled up. And this one is a piece of wool flat yarn folded up and then a button on top. So, you know, anything can be your statement embellishment in the in the center. And it doesn't have to be in the center, you know, like this one I chose to put two doohickeys on the side. I love it. So Deborah, when it comes to uh, the finishing uh, technique yeah. with your gym, how do you tie it off? Um, glue. I just cut it and put glue in the back. And if it's a bit intense, like the scrubby was and the glue wasn't holding real fast because the tape was plasticky and this was, I took a wad of toilet paper with a lot of glue on it and I kind of sealed it. And then when I attach it, I'm gonna have to get rid of some of this white edge, either push it under or just take a felt tip and color that or, or by the time I finish flattening it, then that won't be seen but just taking a, a wad of that with a lot of glue on it, it hears it. So that's the easiest way to edit it is just, just good old glue. User-friendly, right? Hmm? It's all user-friendly. It's all the stuff that we grew up with. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's why I say these workshops are from eight to 80. You know, anybody can do it. And bring that sense of child-like play too. It's child play, right? So the, the only thing that matters is your creativity of what elements you're gonna to put together and you know your, your own aesthetic. Nobody's gonna tell you it's right or wrong. It's not like we're working in gold and diamonds and there's a right way to solder or a right way to um, carve a stone or whatever you call it. I can't think of the word. <laughs> So but, um, I should put my diamonds away. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can show mine. I let me see. Yes, of course. Let's see yours. So I didn't have a paper towel roll or anything. So I took a, a paper coffee cup and uh, added some some paper, cut it up in angles, uh, some fabric strips cast off fabric strips and some yarn that I tied around Fab and doing like little pom -pom balls in the top. And I Fabulous. think there's something to it. I'm definitely have to uh, secure it around with your technique, but I'm loving this awesome. Well, what's also cool with, with the cup is it's slightly funnel shape. So, yeah. you know, the narrow part fits the wrist and as it gets wider, it's more like, you know, fits the upper arm. That's fabulous. And then you, you start making it and you say, you know, I can't go out of the house without two, so I need at least one for each arm, right? <laughs> Whether they're matching or not, it doesn't matter, but you know, you want at least two. And you I love to make your, a match. Uh, huh? your, your fun play with tape. I want to try that. The twisting of tape. I've never done that before. Yeah. But I think that'd be fun yeah. to do. So when you're sitting and watching TV and you want to mellow out, then you know, you can do that. Um, I love this, you know, I don't know where I got it, a thrift shop or something, but it's kind of like a cut up t-shirt like I was showing you before, it's just cotton knit and it has, you know, a thickness to it and it automatically is rolled in on itself. And that's what seems to happen with cotton knit. Like I showed you with the cut up leaded chart. Yes. You know. So again, this can be wide or you can pull on it and it becomes cylindrical mm -hmm. and it becomes like, like rope. And of course it's strong as can be. And you know, so when your leotards, when the elastic is beginning to go, just cut them up and use them. <laughs> no, okay, you know? I have to ask, is there a material that you refuse to work with? Um, I feel like there is, I need a minute to 
in general, it would have to be something that I can't relate to tact tactfully, you know, that it's not appealing. Uh, I mean, I don't love polyester or nylon, but I can't say that I wouldn't work with it because it's got its properties that could be fun. Um, anybody else have a material that they refuse to work with because it's yucky? Mia? No. Rayon. Rayon. Okay. Because? Because it kind of, when, you know, the material is really thin and it kind of shrinks when, if you want to wash it in case. Oh, you know? okay. yeah. Okay. And then it eats up if you use um, softener. Yeah. Anyone else? I just think as long as it's clean and sanitary. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like toilet paper. <laughs> paper towels. Okay. Um, uh, I love this. You're thinking. I can see you thinking, Deborah. Yeah. Um, I'm. Um, I grew up as a vegetarian, and oftentimes meat bones are appealing to look at, but I'm not really interested, although I have one or two bones from spare ribs or something because they're flat and interesting. But once I wash them and then they can be quite interesting, but um, you know, like I, I don't like chicken skin and stuff like that, but you know, that's not exactly something one would work with. Although I used to work with sausage casings because they were fabulous, but they were, you know, dry sausage casings and I would embroider them and sew on them and use them as a linear element and, you know, create webbings, or whatever. But I used to go out to San Francisco. What's the famous uh, salami place there downtown? I think in, in North Point. Anyone Kevin, know? Columbus. Columbus. Yeah. And somehow they would let me buy, they would let me buy, you know, dry sausage casings and, and they're amber in color. So they're so beautiful, you know. And then, and then I used to take QED and I would get reject um, videotape and I would crochet with videotape back in the 60s. Oh, yes. Um, it was, you know, it, it was too beautiful. It was too easy to weave with beautiful silk. And so I, I wanted to be challenged and to try to make something beautiful where the material wasn't inherently beautiful, although everything is. And I remember if I would buy a skein of raw silk, that'd be so beautiful. I would just have to leave it in the skein and then just put two ribbons on it and wear it as a necklace because as is, it was perfection. <laughs> I, I could never unskein it and weave with it. It just didn't work. So. So Deborah, you're returning to us again as a trash and judge for Saturday. Um, I, I just wanted to reflect back on last year. What was your experience like last year as, as the first timer? Oh man, it was such incredible variety. And also the models were so incredible. And then the other, the other judges, it was really interesting because we were uh, almost on the same page, weren't we? We, we just we're in agreement the whole way through, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, so many of the outfits were like total statements from head to toe. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like they just made a top or just a dress, but they would do the shoes and the hats and oh. the other embellishments oh. and really, really make a statement. So it was, so it's going to even be more exciting this year because it's going to be live. And people mm -hmm. have been locked up for years, so God knows what they've been working on, right? <laughs> I have to say, we have a lot of returnees, which surprised me, especially since our show was just maybe five, six months ago. So yeah, that's yeah. exciting to see that people uh, took on this challenge head on and said, okay, we're doing this yeah. again and in a shorter amount of time. And still, the work is still stellar, too. Okay, so you've seen a lot of the work already. I have, oh okay. yeah. And how many entries are there? There are, help me out here, Janet, 26 I entries? I think it's 26 entries. Some 24 people, models. Yes, 24 okay. designers. 
26. Okay. Jesus. Emma, hello. I think Emma here is here. actually <laughs> modeling two of yes. her designs. So she's wow. going to walk down the runway, run around, change, and come back oh. down the runway. Yeah. Like theater, theater. <laughs> and can, can anyone enter, or is there a preliminary thing where you discard any of the entries, or? We are open to the entire public. Anyone and everyone Good. is invited. We only turn people away if they haven't fully completed their outfits in time, or if a body part is hanging out that should not should not be hanging out. Because <laughs> Instagram will knock you off the, off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. <laughs> uh, we have a note here. Thank you, Stephen McCrosty. Uh, he says, your presentation is so much fun, Deborah. Thank you so much. You are an artist extraordinaire. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I agree. Just living my life and trying to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stephen. Well, he's waving at us. Would you like to be spot lit, spotlighted, Stephen? What do you mean? I'll put you in a spotlight. Oh gosh. There you go. <laughs> Hi there. Cool. Hi, everybody. Stevens well, on the board here at the Sonoma Community Center and president, and it's great oh, to have cool. you here. I'm what not an, an artist, but I um I I'm in the arts community and I'm here to help in any way I can to make our community more art friendly and more, I don't know, art appreciative. So everybody doing their part is much appreciated. Mm -hmm. And yeah, thank you for your it is about wonderful presentation. Thank you, thank you. Always an honor to be invited. Hey, everyone's loving this. I love the fact that you've invited us into your living room for this evening. We it. <laughs> My pleasure. Come Should on we... over. We'll have a glass of wine together. And we'll oh, have a party. don't tease us. <laughs> <laughs> we can yeah. make it happen as soon as, as soon as we get out from under all this. I'm with you. Mm. Should we do one last round? Check in on uh, our cups. Yeah. Anybody have any? technical issues on this very low tech process. <laughs> Let's see, I see, is it Maya Mia? Mm -hmm. We're gonna ask you to unmute yourself. You're currently muted. There you go. Oh, you muted yourself again. You were just oh. unmuted for a moment. Sorry, you better? Yes. Okay. So I'm trying to put a little raffle on my car. Hmm. And oh, I that's great. Did... Can you see it? Yes. There we go. That's better. Oh, I love that. Ooh, so like I'm trying licorice. to put like a little ruffle and then I want to yeah, put, I love um, I want to put this on top. Uh-huh. That's it. There we to go. Secure, to secure the ruffle at the edge? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, no, the ruffle looks fabulous. It's a great adding, you know, additional dimension. I want to thank you for your time. It is beautiful oh. to, um, listen to you in person. I actually oh. follow you on Instagram. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Are you on Instagram too? Then I have to follow you. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> or follow no, I am not as good as you. As you. <laughs> Just for the fun of it. Yeah. Maybe I'll try one of this day. Wonderful. I see Jasmine is back. Hi. Um, I oops, sorry. Whoops. I had some millinery elastic that was too short to use, so 
I just yeah. cut it up, but I wasn't exactly sure where to put the last. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. Okay, where to put the elastic? So maybe in the middle or. Um, I think if you have it at the edge there, then you may want three, you know, close to the edge in the middle and the other edge. I, okay. I put them in about like a half an inch, you know, so you see, uh, can you see that? Oh, Up a, I do. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't really right. matter, oh. but I think if but just two, it's far enough in oh. so that it's strong enough and then, um, you know, it's not, it's not a major thing. It doesn't matter. Sorry, yeah. I, I'm on CBD right now. An inch and a half or an inch from the edge? Um, about three quarters of an inch, you know. Okay, thank you. But it could easily be, be an inch, you know. It's, there's, no, <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason. I did it like quarter inch. And it's not yeah. working, so it's yeah. Little, but then I would just do three. I would do another one on okay. the other end, and one in the middle. Okay, okay, yeah, I already made the hole for the middle and the yeah. end. Thanks so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the next time, try something else, you know. Okay, thank you. I put the gold yeah. leaf on there. Okay. Uh, cool. Anyone else? Wait, I want to go back to my, I, we have to see this on <laughs> because it's, Beautiful. I love how that looks. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's stunning. Fabulous. Fabulous. Gorgeous. <laughs> so you can, you Thank can you. also imagine that if you um, did something like this and may not be from the toilet paper roll, but some other cardboard, how beautifully they would be if you turned it into a headpiece, right? Mm -hmm. So you had yes. this cylindrical thing and then you had this bit of of the frou frou coming down over your face, almost like yeah. a, a body. and <laughs> you know you could just imagine, yeah. So you could just imagine it as a hat, but in a in a bigger. There form. we go. <laughs> yeah, just make it in a bigger form, like that. That could a be a hat form. for a Barbie, for a Barbie doll, right? Yes. 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 Speaking Perfect. of Barbie dolls, I think it's time for a quick little Barbie doll, Barbie doll plug. You can say that yeah. five times fast. Um, for those people who don't know, a part of Trash and Week includes recycled and reinvented Barbie dolls who have been saved from the landfills. Oh. And now they're part of an online uh, exhibit and auction. So you can check those out. You can visit our webpage, trashandfashionsonoma.org or check under events at sonomacommunitycenter.org. And there you can find the links to see them, to watch the wonderful gallery show, to bid if you'd like, and uh, yeah, to even vote for your favorite themed doll. So much good stuff, so much. Any more cuffs to show? I think we're good, I think we, are creative and have been inspired this evening. <laughs> now your eyes are gonna be open and you're gonna see wonderful trash everywhere, <laughs> right? Absolutely. I mean, you've been part of this trash community for a while, I'm sure. So you've been, you know, the terminology and you, and you have an awareness around it, but now you'll maybe personalize it all the more. <laughs> well, thank you, Deborah, for sharing your time with us this evening. You're very welcome, my pleasure. Do you have any do final, final words, words of wisdom to the artist in us all? Okay, well, my other favorite quote that I say is, where there's creativity, there are no rules. Where there are no rules, there is no fear, yes. right? And Absolutely. that came out of you know, being intimidated in college and then coming to Berkeley and there were rules. And the other thing is, I say what I do is I, I, I dress up over again because it's an ongoing process. And also what I do in my ABC assemble, I build and I construct using color. So, you know, we're all going to just do our ABCs like good little kitties, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Doing your ABCs. <laughs> And dress to de-stress, because style is healing. 
and frugality is fun and frame the face and flaunt your flavor. <laughs> all of it, all of it. I am obsessed with you. Thank you again so much. You've been and are a delight. You've been a, a great gift to us all this evening because I, I don't know about everyone else, but I certainly, just like Francie said, I needed this. I said, Francie, I meant Lynn. I needed this tonight. So thank you. Yeah, we all did. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll Such see you all Saturday. Share. We'll see you all Saturday at the fashion show, I hope, right? That's right, Saturday, be there. It's gonna be trashy. And then okay. join us tomorrow night, same time. We'll be joined by a wonderful creative designer, customer, all around artist, Machine Dazzle. He will be joining us from New York City as well. We'll let Deborah go to bed. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. I'm <laughs> tired now. Now I'm all wired up. Happy right? crushing. Happy crushing. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining Thank you. tonight. This was amazing. It was a Saturday. Yeah. I want all the words. Let's do it again. <laughs> Teach a class. I know, right? We're, we'll have her back. I have a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Never was, was this taped, Eric? Was this taped? It is. It is taped it is. and it will be um, on our YouTube channel at Sonoma Community Center. That is our YouTube channel that you'll be able to find this uh, at the end of the week. Yay. So you can hear it all again. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. And have a good Thank night. Thank you all for coming. What a pleasure to meet mm. you all. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.